Hi, this is Justice with Tablet Pro. Before we start this video, I want to show you some resources that myself and the team at Rebel have been working to perfect. So we uh, are finally able to show you right here the Artist Pad from Tablet Pro. It works perfectly with Rebel 4.1 and later. I have a tutorial on my resource page for Rebel 4. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with it, it really just gives you all the different tools that you that you want to be using uh, right at your fingertips so you can resize, size, open panels, uh, do basically all the different things that you'd want to be able to do. And switch brushes, all that jazz. Okay, so here is the resource page I have here at the top, the guide that'll tell you what all the different buttons do, this one right here. There's an affiliate purchase link right here, this blue button. If you use that, it'll help me continue development as well as support my family. And I really appreciate you using that. If you need a stylus, I have one on the website as well. This designed for artists and I like it. It's the one I use all the time as opposed to the two surface pens I have. So there's tutorials here, right here. There's an introduction. There's the essential series, the brush creator series, and I will have advanced tutorials here as well, including a lot of demos, the PDF, for Rebel 4.1 and later will be hosted here as well. And the artist pad for Tablet Pro, you can find it right here. The install guide for Tablet Pro is right here as well. And that will walk you through setting up the artist pad that you saw uh, just a moment ago. Let's go ahead and get started with the tutorial. If you guys are using a stylus to do digital art on a Windows 10 tablet, this is a fantastic channel for you. So subscribe right now. Hi, this is Justice. In this video, we're going to be talking about the shape panel inside of the brush creator. So shape, what we did last time in the last video, we talked about max size. This is going to give you the option of taking whatever brush you have and increasing the size from, from a max size of 10. Let's make sure that this is all, all the way at and here, and let's put this at zero. All right, the max size of 10. Let's bring this all the way up to 700, which is a pretty large brush. And let's switch to the pencil tool. And I'd like to show you something here. Let's bring the size all the way up. And up here, make sure size is set to zero. And let's draw here. And you're gonna notice that these are not the same size. So under the hood, there are adjustments for each different tool. All right, let's go ahead and clear our layer. All right, so we're going to do jitter. All these jitters we're going to talk about after we finish. So spacing, a spacing of 100 is going to take the image up here and the grain up here, these squares, and it's going to line them up right next to each other. Now, the reason we can't see this is we have smudge turned on. So again, this square and this square are both on top of each other. All of the white areas is where the paint or the color is coming through. And these are right next to each other. Okay, now when we decrease this, these are going to start to overlap. And they're going to overlap right here. 50%, we bring this down to 25. These are going to be overlapping all but 25% and so on. Now, if you get this all the way down to one, this is going to be the most overlapping that you can do, but it is the most processor intensive, which means that it is the most likely to slow down your system. So instead of doing that, let's bring this up to something a little higher and then let's use smudge. Smudge is going to do this a different way and it's going to blend these for us. Now you can see here, the line is nicely smudged. It looks like a brush stroke. If you want to smooth that out a little bit more and actually blend the texture as well as the shape. And you can see that kind of butters it up and it smooths it out. It makes it just a little bit creamier. That's bring spacing back up to 100 and let's look at scatter so spacing is the difference between left to right alignment 
and scatter is the difference between vertical alignment. So this is going to go up and down. So a scatter alignment of 100, you can guess, it's going to place it up to one full length away. Uh, 200 would be up to two full lengths away. So you can see one space, two space, three space, all of them off of that center line. And that's going to give that. And scatter is jitter. So the scatter is always jitter. So the word jitter is not next to it. So scatter is a randomizer for the brush shape on a vertical plane. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's turn this back down and let's go to opacity. Opacity, you have multipliers and you have a percentage slider over here. So one is going to give us a very light. We can adjust this down. This gives us a lot of precise control. Now we can multiply this or we can increase here. We have a couple different ways to adjust this. So we can go all the way as high as 10. 10 is going to give us a very opaque stroke, but you really don't have to go this high. You can come down here and bring this all the way up and get a, a very similar response. So you can play with that to adjust your opacity. Size, uh, let's go to angle. So angle is going to adjust the rotation of the shape right up here. So if I change the angle here, you can see even in the brush preview is going to adjust in real time. It's kind of fun. All right, so here you can see the shape. It's rotating here. So we can adjust the angle that way. Pen tilt we've been through already. Again, just a quick reminder, follow trajectory is going to follow the path of the brush. Pen tilt is going to look at my brush and the angle that it is on the screen to decide which way. Uh, let's turn smudge back on. You can see this a little bit clearer. And smudge, and let's bring the spacing down. All right, so here, see the difference between these lines because it is paying attention to the tilt of the stylus. And this is, this is something I've wanted in a painting program for a long, long time. And pen rotation would be if you have a special, I think Wacom's the only one that makes them, but you can twirl the pen and it twirls the shape, the head of the brush will spin. Uh, that's really cool. If you have that, use it. If you don't have it and you set pen rotation, pen rotation will look, this setting will look at your stylus and say, okay, do you have a pen rotation? Yes or no? If the answer is no, it will automatically use pen tilt. It's not going to switch this setting, but it is going to automatically switch internally to use pen tilt. So if you're not sure, use pen rotation uh, or none. And those two will give you the most control with the least amount of um, questions. Okay, so we're going to leave ours on pen rotation. Tip tilt. Again, we've gone through this one before. We're going to set this. Uh, we're going to go to a pencil in order to demonstrate this. And let's adjust our size back down. I'll tell you a little secret. I actually prefer using the watercolor brush with water turned off as my pencil. Here, you can see it's got a nice kind of graphite look. And then when you tip sideways, it doesn't have that multiplying effect. It blends very nice and smoothly. Mm. <laughs> oh, 
Oh yeah. Okay. Now we have to go to either acrylics or oils in order to see the last two settings here, max loading and max smudge. So let's draw a little bit. Let's pick a nicer color. Let's push nice and hard and bring that down and let's push nice and hard. You can see how clearly those are differentiated. Okay, max smudge. Let's bring this all the way down, bring max loading up to one. So this is a little bit gritty. You can see that grain, this grain right here showing up in that stroke more. Max smudge, let's bring this all the way up. And you can see it's smoother. It's got that same type of effect as this smudged lines. So this option right here, smudged lines, if this is turned off and we drag across the screen, you can see the texture of the brush. We drag fast. If we push hard, you're still going to see that texture showing up. Now, if we turn on smudged lines, this is a velocity based option. And keep in mind, this setting might actually go through a name change in future versions but it'll be in the same position. So here we drag slowly and then we go quickly. As soon as we start adding some speed to this, this is going to start blending, smudging that texture into a stroke. All right, the last one here is image sequence. In order for us to get image sequence to show up and not be grayed out, we're going to click on add shape. We're gonna add four shapes. And let's go ahead and select something different. All right, now we have four different shapes here, and they don't actually have to be different for this. Let's go here. You can see we've got a fun little brush. In order to access image sequence, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to select here from the texture order option. So sequential is not gonna give us an option to play with the image sequence, but random pen pressure and pen tilt will. Now these three, random pen pressure and pen tilt, are going to use this setting down here, image sequence. So random is gonna give you a number that you can select to randomize, and pen pressure and pen tilt are going to give you the option of adjusting which angle or how much pressure is going to switch those different ones. So let's select pen pressure. And down here, you can see the sequence. This is the shape and grain one, shape and grain two, shape and grain three, shape and grain four. These black areas are the dividers between those. So very light pressure is going to trigger the first image. We can't see that very well right now because we have spacing. And smudge turned on. Let's clear the layer and let's demonstrate this again. All right, so we can see that very first shape right here and grain. Now let's see, the second one is our triangle. So I'm going to push soft and then a little harder. We're going to see that switch to that triangle shape. You can see the triangle shape. The next one here is the star. We look down here, the star is way over here. So it's going to be a little bit harder for us to trigger. We're going to have to push pretty hard. And it's slightly, slightly less hard than full pressure. And now if I push really hard, we're going to see that square shape. And you can see how that works. So if we put this spacing back down, clear the layer, and we go from light to heavy pressure, we can see how that brush morphs in real time. That's really powerful, super cool. All right, let's clear the layer. So we have this option here, glaze. Now glaze, if we have that turned off, so I have the opaque mode set here, and I'm drawing, if I turn glaze on, it's going to go over the top and it's gonna keep that transparency there. I think this is really useful. I like using it if I'm shading and I wanna add a shadow somewhere this is going to give me that transparent effect over the top without having to adjust a lot of other settings. You can make a brush that is specifically a shading brush and use this glaze feature. And this is also very similar to real life watercolor. So you can use glaze on your different watercolor brushes to get that effect. 
Then we have one more little button here, force rotation mode, and this is going to lock these rotation settings. So as for jitter, all the jitters, these are randomizers. So this is going to give some more organic shapes and placement to your brushes. So it seems a little bit less digital, a little less mechanical. So spacing jitter is jitter on a horizontal plane. Scatter is jitter on a vertical plane. Opacity jitter is going to fluctuate the opacity of your brush. Size jitter is going to um, fluctuate randomly the size of your brush. The angle, the same thing, is going to adjust the angle randomly. And those, all of these, if you set these at small increments here, then that's going to give you kind of a funky, very organic looking, always different brush stroke. And that kind of looks, that kind of looks cool. All right, so let's see, let's adjust spacing uh, here. No, no, I like that. That's pretty cool. So that's how jitter works. That's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to be going over grain and canvas settings. If you have questions or comments, put it in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.